Hi, it's Jody. Jody Evans from the Joy Love Bus. <laughs> ah, I've been sitting here, so many things on my mind. Yesterday I was painting the pantry door and I kept getting this whole conversation in my head that I really wanted to bring and put here. Um, we have a learning curve. My whole painting project has not gone as I expected at all. And I, I was going to just paint the pantry door. And then I started painting the pantry door. And then I got this bright idea to paint the area behind the pantry door. And I didn't think it through ahead of time. And I started painting while the door was still attached, like didn't take the hinges off or anything. And then I ta after I start painting, I taped everything and then I'm painting more. And it came time to take the paint off the other day. And I didn't score carefully enough in all the areas. And as I was pulling paint off, some paint was peeling and it was a nightmare in the moment. But I never got upset. I was really proud of myself because I kept thinking it was funny. And I guess I've watched enough Kyle Cease material to because he's always saying, I hope I screw this up. You know, that it, the idea being that it's more important to jump in and just do it. Don't wait till it's perfect or you'll never do it. Just start, say, I don't care. I hope I screw this up. I'll learn as I go. Well, it was a big learning experience. And I was messaging one of my friends and I was sending her pictures as I was peeling paint and everything. And I'm like, this is just too funny. Because, you know, who would do this? Who would start painting without even like taking hinges off and stuff? I would. <laughs> um, and she said something about it's fun watching your learning curve. And so now it's a couple days later and I've got the door spread out on, over the dinette and I'm painting the door and I'm thinking about this idea of a learning curve. And I remembered reading Malcolm Gladwell's book called The Outliers. And in that book, he talks about the outliers in our society. There's most of us and then there's those people that accomplish like amazing things like Olympic athletes and you know, business, like people like uh, Bill Gates, okay? And he, each chapter is a different explanation of a set of circumstances that happened in their life, their way, being in the right place at the right time, like a few years earlier or a few years later, it wouldn't have been the right circumstances for Bill Gates to have everything fall into place the way it did. The second chapter, as I'm painting the door, the second chapter like really stuck out to me. 10,000 hours. It takes 10,000 hours on average before you become really good at something. And he's got all kinds of, you know, explanations. And the book is great. The book is really great. And, and now that it's been on my mind, I'm thinking I might read it again. But... I was painting and I was thinking 10,000 hours of painting, I would have this down. I would know you should do this first and then this and make sure you do this this way and make sure you do that that way. And it's a learning curve. And so that idea stuck with me. Like there's a learning curve in everything. But from where we sit before we start, we're, we're sitting in the place of I have not done this yet. And then we see in our mind the end goal that we want. And we never remember that there's a learning curve along the way. And it's not going to all fall into place perfectly sometimes. Sometimes you're going to have to have that learning curve. And I thought about like my son. He has, um, well actually both of my sons are having financial issues. And they keep saying, I, I'm going to do this different and I'm going to do that different. And then if something doesn't change or get better right away, they think they're a complete failure and they go, you know, it's like everything's black and white. And they forget or don't understand yet because they haven't lived long enough to figure out that there's a gray area. There's a learning curve along the way. And every time you put yourself out there and you attempt something new, something different, you're making progress, forward progress. 
And even if you don't get the result that you were expecting right away, you've accomplished the learning curve. You now know, okay, well, that didn't work. And I didn't think about that. And I didn't realize I was going to have to worry about that. So now next time I know account for these things. And you go in the second time, smarter, stronger, better because of the learning curve. And then last night I was out to dinner with some friends and one of my friends was talking about what she really wants to do. And I said, well, what is it that you really want to do and what is holding you back from doing it? And she's like, well, I once had a dream and I did this and I did that and it didn't work. And, and so I started asking her for more details along the path. I said, hold on, go back. You had an opportunity. You wanted to do this. You saw an opportunity. You took it. You know, how long was it? Blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, and everything was a failure. And I'm like, stop, give me details. And I could see from where I sat looking into her story, I could see where she saw I had a chance. I tried it. It didn't work. I, I walked away and, and it's a failure and I'm still paying for it. And what I could see was that, A, she took a chance and started. So now she's someone who takes chances and does things. And then I could see that she wasn't fully prepared going in. So it was going to take a while for it to become successful. But she didn't have a life set up to support that. So when she had to make a choice, she had different options. I can stay and keep digging a bigger hole. I can hope it works out. I can this, I can that. I said, you didn't fail. You saw several choices in front of you. And in the moment where your life was and what you knew to be true in that moment, you picked the best path you could pick. And for you in that moment, it was saying, this is not working. I need to walk away. And now later, you're looking back on that as a failure. And it wasn't. It was simply saying, this is not working. I need to go in this direction now. That's learning curve. That's not failure. That's being on your learning curve. And already I got so excited for her because I saw someone who's now had that experience. And now if she decides to do something again, she already knows how to take a risk. She already knows how to get excited and dream and look for opportunities opening up in front of her. She already knows all the things it took to get as far as she did get with that thing. So she doesn't have to relearn those. And if anything, she'll do them even better because now she knows what she would do differently for the time she did do that. The, the beginning part, she knows what to do differently in the beginning part next time. I saw a complete and total success in this story. And I can't wait to talk to her more about it. There's a learning curve. It's so, so, so important that we remember that. So I was just thinking about this as I'm painting around the hinges. I took it off the, the wall, but I still haven't taken the hinges actually off the door. They're, they're covered in paint anyway. I haven't gotten around to taking them off and getting the paint off. So I'm laughing at myself as I'm painting and sealing around the hinges. I'm like, who does this? <laughs> Someone who has a learning curve. Seriously, read the book Outliers. It really is awesome. The very first chapter, he talks about Canadian hockey teams. Each chapter, like in the beginning, each chapter is a little random, and then he pulls it all together at the end. It's very cool. I've, uh, his first book I ever read was The Tipping Point, and that was a good one. I really want to read that one again, too. Um, but the first chapter, he talks about Canadian hockey teams and how um, if you go back and you look... It's like, oh, these kids were the best, so they got picked. And he said, really, no, it starts all the way back in childhood where you're on these teams and they're divided by age. And so the kids who were just turned that age and got into that, like when you're seven and eight years old, there's a big difference between your ability, your physical size, shape, everything from seven to eight. Like one year makes a huge difference in your growth and your practice and your, and he said, surely on where your birthday falls versus the cutoff of the teams, the kids who have already been that age for a year and now they are in this group because of their age, they're going to be way you know, they have been eight all this time. 
And now you got kids that their birthday was yesterday, they turned eight, so now they're thrown in this group. And they're with kids that are bigger, stronger, been playing longer. And, and, and so these same children keep moving up in the ranks. He said, there's, if you go and look at the adult teams, more birthdays fall in this one range. And if you take it back to childhood, where the cutoffs were for the dates, he said, so there could be all these other great hockey players who could have been professionals, but because when they were a little kid, they didn't, their birthday didn't fall right. They didn't get the advantage because they're always behind in their age group because of where their birthday fell. And so as it all kept going all the way through school and all the way through high school and all the way to adulthood, they were constantly outshined. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a very good book. But the whole book just talks about all the different things that have to come into play to be successful at something. And by reading the book, you realize that you can be successful at anything if you're willing to do what it takes to get there, which is put yourself out there. I make these videos and people are like, oh, Jody, it's so easy for you to make a video. Have you seen my early ones? Have you seen back in July of 2017? It was a hot mess. I still don't edit them. They still are very like, oh, when I start and oh, when I finish. The middle here, I'm on a roll. I got it going on. But there's a learning curve. So dream and dream big. And go after it with everything you have. Know the difference between allowing and forcing. But do believe and do vision and do put yourself out there and hope you screw it up because you did it. That's what counts. And once you're in it, you will learn and you will get better. And 10,000 hours in, you will be the best there ever was. But don't stop three feet before gold. Don't do it for 4,000 hours and get frustrated because you're not an expert yet and it's not as good as you would like. Know that it takes a learning curve and 10,000 hours to be an Olympic gold medalist. That's my message today. I love you. You have everything it takes to be amazing. Let's rock this. Let's do this life thing really good.